what's the history behind the Saturn Network? And how long have you been around? Give us some insight on what this project is and what it means for the entire crypto community. Yeah, definitely. So we've been around for about two years, kind of looking at the industry and noticing how exchanges were developing and changes that were happening to how people were organizing their token sales. And we kind of noticed that even though blockchain technology and smart contracts were were kind of fabled to bring on this new era of innovation and help businesses kind of come out of the grips of middlemen, it wasn't really happening. And in reality, you were just seeing new kind of monopolies form that were stifling innovation and just in it to kind of line their own pockets. So what Saturn Network is essentially trying to create tools, open the doors and make it kind of very easy for businesses to join the decentralized ecosystem and keep growing and reach kind of more blockchains and, and a wider audience. So how do we do that is in first step is, is making a decentralized exchange, which doesn't have any kind of barriers to entry. So we allow free token self-listing because at the moment you kind of see that exchanges act as the entry point for new customers so if there's any kind of barriers to get onto these exchanges then it's kind of a barrier to enter cryptocurrency as a whole and also there's a lot of it just comes down to conveniences because you sign up to these exchanges and it's an easy way to hold all your coins so another thing we're trying to do is, is make it much easier to hold multiple coins from different blockchains um, and that's where kind of our wallet comes in, Saturn Wallet, which supports Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. And you can switch between both networks very easily. Um, and then kind of to wrap it all up is also there's the Saturn DAO, which we're kind of building this whole ecosystem with, uh, with a shared ownership in mind so that there's no kind of one person at the top making all these decisions or that could be could be uh, fall down to their own kind of greed or something like that. So as soon as you're holding our own Saturn tokens, you're part of the team, you own the platform, we're all kind of in it together and we make decisions as a, as a collective. Thank you, thank you. I wanna hit on the first point. So you talked about this decentralized exchange, so otherwise known as a DEX. And yep. a lot of the viewers of the Cardano effect, they're based in the US, and we know that there are a lot of regulations that are very stifling. So recently, Bitrex announced that they were removing a lot of ERC-20 tokens, and then Binance followed. And it seems that regulation is still not clear, and I don't think it's going to be clear for the foreseeable future. It's very difficult for some of these smaller projects that may have positive use cases, but their pockets may not be deep enough to force themselves into the system to actually get into the hands of the people that want to actually hold those particular tokens or par participate in that protocol. So where do you think the the idea, what do you think the idea of, de of a DEX or a decentralized exchange, what do you think it's going to evolve to? And why do you think it's important for Saturn to build a DEX? And also, yeah. if, you could, if you could expand sorry. on, sorry to interrupt there, is what is the difference between a DEX and Binance and Bittrex. I mean, let, yeah, I mean, we can basic. we can start with that. So, what's the difference between a decentralized exchange and a centralized exchange? Is is that when you're trading on a decentralized exchange, you're not kind of giving up any um, control over your funds. So, in Saturn Network's case, all trading happens wallet to wallet. So you don't have to make any deposits. You don't have to make any withdrawals. Whereas if you want to trade on Binance or Coinbase or somewhere like that, once you've signed up, you need to start depositing your tokens into the actual exchanges system. So they'll give you a wallet where you deposit it. And then once they've confirmed that, you can start trading. But that means you've given up control of your funds. So there's a potential possibility of the exchange being hacked and then you just lose your funds or you know, if, if there's any downtime from the exchange side, then you've lost access. Whereas if you're trading on a decentralized exchange, as in Saturn's case, if, if ever our website actually went down, well, one that you don't actually need the website to trade, but if the web page did stop working, you, you still have all your funds in your wallet. So it doesn't really matter. There's, there's no risk there of, of being hacked or losing access to your 
your own funds. Um, so that's one of the different key differences between a decentralized exchange and a centralized exchange. And I'm sorry, I've, I've kind of forgot the second question you were asking, Philip. If you so the second, part, the second part of his question there was, um, was well, let me give you an example. Do, do I have to KYC into a DEX and can right. the DEX cut me off like what Philippe was asking with Binance? Can, I'm from New York. Can the DEX cut me off and do I have to KYC into it? Right. So, yeah. So in the news recently, we've seen a lot of exchanges saying that they're they're going to have to stop access to customers based in, in North in the United States. And and the and then we, we also saw that Binance said, well, you can still use the Binance Dex, just if you can't go on the Web page. And whereas that, that might be true in the case of Saturn Network, we're running on blockchains that are proven to be decentralized, such as Ethereum Classic. Like Alex said in the beginning, it's a, a blockchain where you know it's immutable. And no one's going to start stopping access to the actual blockchain because all the, the nodes are kind of decentralized. Whereas Binance Dex is, is running on Binance Chain, and you don't really know what's going on there. So um, you could you could actually essentially start censoring access to the actual blockchain. Whereas in our case, it, it's kind of irrelevant. You can't stop access to, to trading on Saturn Network. And just to jump in there, I mean, it's absolutely true that these exchanges go down. I mean, I lost funds in Mt. Gox uh, and they're just gone. It's like, but at least with, with Saturn, you know, you can see your funds at all times. You have maximum control and you can't be, you don't have to pay anybody to list there, which is, in my opinion, the dumbest expense imaginable because it's like, I'm trying to create a startup, I'm trying to create a company. And in order for people to just be able to interact with my software, I need to pay a middleman a hundred thousand dollars. Or it could be, I, in, I think in Binance's case, it was a million last year. To even get listed on there so yeah. you know, tools like saturn uh really open up the doors to pretty much anybody it could be a game studio it could be you know a foreign company it could be just a, a plain a secure like a, a stock pretty much from somebody in the developing world or like a decentralized financial instrument i mean anybody can list for any reason and i think that's what's so incredibly amazing about saturn Another thing I think is amazing about it is I was just practicing it the last couple of days to prepare for this podcast, and I made my trades from me to the other person. That was it. It was a direct one-to-one -one trade, and it was very fast. My trades were like I was just buying. Like I didn't wait for it to go up or down because there's not a lot of volume on it, but I just made a purchase, and it ranged from about 15 seconds to a minute. It usually was on the minute side, but it was – it was one to one. Is that right? Is that how it's working? Yeah, it's it's one to one. You you trade. Uh, I mean, it works by using the smart contract as as kind of like a automated uh, escrow system. But it, it's peer to peer basically. You're you're trading peer to peer, and like you said, the reason it takes maybe a minute is because the order book is is completely on chain. And that means that to make a trade, the network has to confirm a transaction. So occasionally, if you're trading on Ethereum, maybe the chain will take a little bit longer as that blockchain has, has a much more use. Um, but really, I've never seen transactions take longer than kind of five minutes. Uh, lots of people like to kind of spout this, I guess, it's not really FUD because it's true, but Yes, a decentralized exchange is never going to have those kind of second uh, trading that that maybe people are looking for on a on a centralized platform. But I think that the security aspects of not being able to lose access to your funds um, vastly kind of outweigh any any want to be able to make your trade happen in in under a second. So I wanted to also say as well, because I think that was such a good point by Sam about the idea of speed and what how fast you need these DEXs to be. So I'll give you an example. I was selling uh, a few stocks uh, a couple days ago, and I wanted to sell it at 7 p.m. 
And literally the only time that I could actually sell it was to wait until the next day for it to be sold at the end of tomorrow with, uh, you know, at 5 p.m. And right. the beauty of Saturn is that if you want to sell your funds, you want to buy something, it's open 24 seven. You know, there is there is no waiting. So maybe it doesn't take a second. But I would say that the current system we have takes days. Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, OCG was making fun of me because I was paying too much gas. The reason my transactions were so quick, I was leaving it on the default one way, which uh, whatever it was, it came out to like less than a penny for my transactions. And OCG was making fun of me. He's old crypto geek on the forums. And he said, hey, you're paying too much in gas. So I turned it down. I, I dropped it by an order of magnitude and it was still rolling my transactions through. Honestly, I was amazed. Uh, I thought it was really cool. Fascinating is probably a better word to describe it. So um, thank you, Sam and Alex, for that.